Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and why don't you come make a umbrella, Ella, Ella, A, A, A. All right, let's see how this is done. In your Bernina embroidery software, you're going to open your designs. And we're working with the freestanding lace umbrellas and that is collection 51526 from, from OESD, or you might know them as embroideryonline.com. And for this particular umbrella, we're gonna be using the one that has the fabric that you place in it. And I'm using the 01, 02, 03, and 04 files. So I'm gonna simply go ahead and click on the first one, hold down the shift key, click on four, and then hit open, and that will subsequently open all four of those designs. And it takes a little bit for that to open, but once it is, you'll see them previewed in the tab right here. So this is a really simple exercise. All we're trying to do is take the first color, which in this case, this is the handle of the umbrella, is I want to take this first color, copy it, and paste it in a new file. So the first thing that I'm going to do is select that number one. I just clicked on it. I've got color film open. If you don't have color film open on your computer, it's pretty easy to open it. You just go up here to the top of the screen there where you've got that little red, yellow, and blue film strip, and you click on it, and that'll open color film. So I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna open or do a new blank design. That's that little page right there. And that's gonna open a new tab right there. So I just click on this and copy, and then go over to my new design one and hit paste. And now I have placed that first color right in that hoop. And I'm gonna go ahead at this point and right click on the hoop icon so I can make sure that my jumbo hoop, I'm using a Bernina 8 series, I want the jumbo hoop to be selected and I want foot number 44 to be selected. And I'm just gonna turn off automatic centering and choose manual. And now I wanna view this or resize this to hoop so I can I can see my design in there. And so I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna hop on over here to the third part of the design, which is this guy. And let's talk about this guy for a second. Do you see how the first color is just like a flower shape, but then the second color has this little circle in there? Well, we're not gonna cut the circle out with the cut work tool. We're actually going to just use a punch tool after the design is created for that. You can actually do a cut work on this if you like, but I'm just simply doing this. So what I'm gonna do is I've selected this. I'm gonna go to copy. I'm gonna open that design one, and then I'm gonna paste my flower and move it just to the side about like that. And now we have another design. This is design number two. And this one has the same issue with the circle, but we're just gonna take these pieces and I'm going to copy, go into our design one and paste. And I'll arrange that somewhere like that. And then I have one more design and that is the little wedges for the umbrella. Now, these designs here, these shapes, we only need one of each of those, but in the umbrella case here, we need to actually stitch six of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this like we've done the others, go into our design one and paste it and I'm gonna move, move it further down here on the hoop. Now, there's a few ways that we can do this. I'm gonna just select everything here by drawing a box around it and bring it into the hoop, just like that. What we can do is we could make more of these designs here because we need to make six of them. So I could 
you know, drag over another copy or whatever, but that's gonna add to the stitching time. So instead, I'm gonna delete that, and I'm just gonna put this down here, and we're just gonna layer six layers of fabric on top of this one, so that way we can cut all six pieces all at the same time. Whereas these, we only need one of, so we're just separating these so we have the top half and the bottom half. So now what I'd like to do is go ahead and pick color number two and the outline stitch, and I'm gonna digitize a rectangle around my top piece. Like that. And then I'm gonna do the same around this bottom piece, like that. Then I'm gonna select this, copy, paste, and change that to a green color. And then I'm gonna take my little buddies that are up here, and I'm gonna move them down to the bottom using some of these tools in my color film piece. So now we're gonna have a placement. This is the placement rectangles and the tack down rectangles. And this is just because we're gonna only need to cut two pieces of fabric in this case. And I'll talk about that when we get to the stitching it out part. But now what I wanna do is turn these files right here into cut work files. Now, here's the big rule, is we cannot click on all of these together at one time and make them all do cut work. We have to select them individually. So I'm gonna open up my cut work and my stump work drawer, which is over here to the left. And now I'm going to just select this first design there, that little hexagon, and I'm gonna convert it to a cut work border. Now, I wanna show you that little window, if that's not open on your computer, once you've got your cut work border done, that piece looks like satin stitching and whatever, when you open or click, left click on object properties, it's gonna open that little box. So I'm gonna choose from the drop down menu, cut, and I wanna deselect the outer stabilizing run. And that's all I need to do to that. And now that's a cut work tool file. That's a cut work file. So then I'm gonna do the same thing with this cane, convert to cut work border, cut, delete the outer stabilizing run. And then this is just very, very repetitive as we go across all of these various pieces. All right, so this is pretty much complete. The only thing that we need to do now is go to our blue arrow selector and select this top rectangle and record our size. So this is a width of 7.1 by a height of 6.772. I like to round up. So basically I would cut like eight inches by seven inches or whatever, just to make sure that that piece of fabric will cover this entire area. Then we select this box to just see, and that's just a little bit over four and a half by, you know, so maybe a five by five inch piece would be appropriate for this. So this is ready to go to our sewing machine. So all we're gonna do is click on the little sewing machine here, select your USB stick, and then send it to the USB stick. Now, once you're at your sewing machine or your embroidery machine, you're gonna find that file off of your USB stick, select it, and then you can see here, I've got a little snafu here where it's not fitting, but all I need to do is just move it down into my hoop further and now it fits. And the first things that are gonna happen with this obviously you're not gonna be using a simulator with your project, um, you're gonna be using your real machine and your screen won't look exactly like this, but you're gonna make sure that you've picked the 44 C foot, that you have your jumbo hoop attached or the hoop that you designed these shapes to fit in, have your cut work tools selected, 
and then everything needs to fit in the hoop and then we're gonna go to stitch it out. So you can see here the way that these colors are gonna work is it does that blue that's gonna stitch your placement line. So let's talk a little bit about what you're gonna need to hoop up for right now. You're just simply gonna hoop up one layer of heavy cutaway stabilizer and that is what these placement stitches are gonna stitch on. That's all we need. That goes in your hoop and then just with that, you're going to stitch these guys out. Then once you place your fabric down, you're going to stitch these pieces out and then the cut work pieces follow. And you'll notice here on the screen that it'll say cut one and the next color says cut two. And to really help you out here with your the logistics here of stitching this out, you wanna make sure that you select this thread sequencing button because now all of the cut work positions are gonna stitch out at the same time and it'll make for a faster stitch out for you. So when, when you're getting ready to stitch and you're starting stitch number one or color number one here, that's when you're going to have your fabric down now. The, what you need for fabric is the size rectangles cut that you determined. And with every piece of fabric, you need to cut two pieces the same size of stable stick. So for the umbrella, that's gonna be 12, shape, 12 pieces this shape. And for these, it's going to be two pieces this shape of the stable stick cutaway stabilizer. But that's it. This is a pretty simple project. So then we're gonna go ahead and, and stitch out these cutwork files. And then you're gonna grab your umbrella file to stitch out our umbrellas. What you're gonna do is you're gonna unthread the needle getting that thread all the way out of the channel. We want zero thread up above in the machine. You can leave the bobbin in, that's fine. And then you're going to remove the needle. Okay. And you're gonna replace it with the cut work tool. Much like the needles, it's got the flat piece that goes towards the back. And you're gonna put that in there. And then you're gonna to need to move this little dial here to whatever number the machine tells you to start with. And normally it starts with one, but don't take that for granted. Make sure you read your machine, just like you would read the colors on the machine. Okay, so now that our pieces are done, we can just pop them right out. Sometimes we need to get the scissors to help us a little bit, but we're gonna pop these pieces out and then we're gonna set up our umbrella files and stitch those out. When you wanna stitch out your umbrellas with your hoop hooped up with your one layer of Badge Master and one layer of Aqua Mesh, we're gonna pick our designs and I'm just gonna start with the umbrella part and we can get rid of our 44 C foot now and use the regular 26. And that will help us get the full view of our jumbo hoop. And I of course wanna pick the jumbo hoop here. There we go. And we still, that needle plate is fine and everything. So what you can do is stitch all of your umbrella tops at the same time. 
and we need six of them. So then all I'm going to do here is just kind of rearrange them a little bit so they're not totally on top of each other like that. That's perfect. Okay, so now that this is ready to go, we can use that same design sequencing so we can place all of our shapes at the same time and everything's going to stitch out together. And then, of course, we would take the rest of our designs and stitch those out, too. It's pretty simple. All right. So the first thing that I did, and you saw this earlier when I was doing the demonstration on the machine, is that I've set up this to stitch our six little pieces of our umbrella. And I have a layer of aqua mesh, badge master and aqua mesh under here. I just decided because my badge master was a little bit narrower. And then I, you saw me cut out these pieces. So now I am just placing them using a water soluble glue stick. And I just put a little bit of glue right on the back and I'm just holding them into place so it can do the tack down stitch. And now I'm going to give that a second to dry and then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to do the same thing with the underside of our umbrellas. This is what we're putting on the underside. It looks like a map. I just thought that would be really cute to put a map under here and then we're going to alternate them when we put this together of white then red then white then red. Kind of circusy. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and stitch this down. And this is just going to be a little tack down stitch to hold everything down. But because gravity always wins, I think we know this, right, ladies? <laughs> I had to use a little bit of tape on the back, and I just want to make sure that I peel some of that tape off. And yes, I know there is water soluble tape that I could have used. However, it's not sometimes as sticky as I like. So I'm just going to turn this upside down and peel the extra tape off after this stitch is out. All right, so we haven't started any new plumbing tutorials. So here is one of our pieces. Now you can see here that I opted to stitch the lace version of the umbrella handle. It's gonna kind of button up like this, but I trimmed them to kind of this level so that we don't have so much stuff to dissolve. And then I'm just gonna run this under the water. Now the aqua mesh will dissolve relatively quickly while the badge master kind of sticks around like a little bit of starch. And we kind of want that with some of these freestanding items. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give these guys a bath. I don't use detergent or anything. And then after I've washed everything or dissolved all of the stuff, I will put this on my um, ironing board. But here, here's the deal, when I put this on the ironing board, I don't put a fluffy towel down because the, the gluey, um, starchy stuff from the Badge Master will maybe attract fuzz and then that's really hard to pick out without rewashing. So I'll put this on like a nice pressing cloth or a piece of muslin or whatever on top of my ironing board. Um, some people use parchment paper that you can just get from the grocery store. You can certainly use that too. And then I'll let that completely dry. Dry overnight. Please don't try to help it along by pressing it. You could just scorch your fabric or other things like that. So once it's completely dry, then I'll steam flatten it so everything is nice and beautiful. And then I'll go in and I'll trim some of our little whiskers off if there are any. And um, 
and then I'll show you how to button it. And that's like where all of the magic really happens. Now these umbrellas also require a dowel and in the instructions it'll tell you what size to get and what length to cut it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I think I'm gonna go ahead and paint it like a metallic color, like maybe a brass or, or a bronzy kind of color. But that's up to you how you would wanna do that. And, um, and yeah, so this just takes a moment of washing and then we'll get to the final assembly. Right, look at how nice our umbrella dried. So here are the little centers or the spacers or braces that we needed to make. There's another one here. And um, I did take a dowel. This is a nine inch, like just slightly more than a quarter inch dowel. And so I went ahead and made it a little sparkly. You know, nobody likes a flat umbrella. What can I say? And then here's our lace piece here. And one crucial piece that you need are your alligator clamps because these are the things that's going to really help us get into these little holes here and button. But I have to do a few things before we get in totally into this. So I'm going to use my perfect punch tool. I'm going to grab that in a moment and make holes here and in here. But before I do any of that, I want to actually sew my pieces together. So I'm going to take that black isocord thread, thread it, wind a bobbin, thread it through my machine, and then stitch. Now, of course, if you were matching your bobbin thread to the top, you already have a little bit of the black thread still. So let's go ahead and do that. It's pretty simple, doesn't take very long. It's just a regular number two zigzag stitch. And you know what? I just. I just make that stitch length go a little bit closer together than normal, so around one millimeter in length. all sewn together we're going to take like a little cutting board place that under our piece and cut and I found the right tip to go right with this piece so now I'm just going to push down and this kind of twists and makes a little cut into it all at the same time and then I just want to make those small holes in all of these Okay, so hey, I only have two more umbrellas to make to make a cute little mobile. And I think that this might be a good centerpiece for the wedding, you know, with that vintage circus theme and everything. Well, nonetheless, if you wanna see more videos like this one, if you wanna see less singing and dancing and more actual tutorials, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. 
under my umbrella. Ella, Ella, A, A, A. That's the only honest to goodness lyrics I know from that song. See ya. <laughs>